Hey, my name is Dan Verhoeven. I'm a freediving cameraman. And one of the questions I'm most often asked, besides how deep can you dive, is what type of camera do you use to, um, for underwater photography? And what type of camera should I use for uh, underwater photography? In this video, I'm gonna go into that question. I'm gonna go into it in two different ways. I'm gonna look at which camera is best for video, which camera is better for pictures, and I'm gonna go into it by budget. So which camera for a low budget to all the way, which camera for high-end budget. Okay, so let's go into it. To begin with, a bit of a bit of background. I have shot with Nikon, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Olympus, DJI, GoPro, RED cameras. I don't have a particular particular preference for any type, any brand. I have a preference for good, clean images. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so these are just my preferences. I haven't shot with all cameras in the world, so with certain certain recommendations here, I'm just kind of going with either files that I've seen or things that I've heard from other camera uh, cameramen. I kind of base my um, opinion on whether it's a good camera on if it shoots raw, if you can get a nice wide angle lens for it, and if it gives you um, manual control over your image. So um, let's start with zero budget. We've all been there, you've got nothing in your bank account, maybe even less than nothing. You got a negative bank account, you have lint in your pockets, you have nothing in your wallet. In that case, well, you're not screwed entirely. Financially you might be, but you might still have this in your pocket. You can shoot with your phone. Most phones these days are waterproof. Just to be sure, check with your manufacturer. But most modern phones, um, iPhones, Samsungs, whatever phone you shoot with, have a certain waterproof rating. That means you can take them down to, let's say a meter, half a meter if you want to be safe, but surface shots, just underneath the surface, you can do that up to like 20, 30 minutes. So like if you do a short session and you keep it very shallow, you're probably all right with your phone. Um, I've been involved in a couple of projects now where they used iPhones underwater and they they, they gathered really good results. So don't underestimate your phone. Now, if you have a bit of a budget, say up to a hundred dollars, there are cheap action cams out there. I've tried them, I'm not impressed. What you can do for less than a hundred dollars is usually get a, a sort of a, a plastic housing, like a sort of an envelope for your iPhone or for your phone. If you look around online, you can find them with like a little lens on it. So that already gives you more of an angle. And like I said, like these phones are quite clever. They can shoot video quite well. You can shoot photos quite well. And the advantage, another advantage of shooting on your phone is you can edit right on the spot and upload it right on the spot. So you don't even need a computer to do anything with them. The next step up budget wise. So let's say between a hundred dollars and $500, you, there's almost no denying for film, the GoPro. GoPro recently came out with number seven. This is a six. GoPro does film rather well. It does 4K at 60 frames a second or something ridiculous like that. Like it does a big, it does it um, multiple resolutions. It does stabilization quite well these days. I like how it handles transitions from dark to light. I like the time lapses on them. I think it does film quite well. I've shot a lot of stuff on GoPro and published it, so you can't edit it too much. Like it starts banding really quickly, but overall I'm, I'm very impressed with the GoPros. Like this, they can go down to 10 meters. That tends to be not enough for us free divers. We tend to go a bit deeper than that, but you can get a housing for cheap. I think they're like 50 bucks or something and that increases the rating to 60 meters. That's deep enough for most people, I think. Um, so yeah, 
Very good film camera. Photo camera, however, dear lord, let me show you. The shutter button is here, right? So if you try and press that, like it's already hard to hold because it's so small. And then you try to press that and it requires a lot of action before anything happens. Like it's, it's not doing it. It's, there you go. You hear that click? So that's, it's impossible to press that shutter button without the camera moving. And, it, and it's so small that it makes it anatomically unfit to take pictures with. There's no shutter action. So GoPro good for films, not for pictures. For pictures in that price bracket between like 100 and 500, I'd re recommend this. This is the um, Olympus Tough. This is the TG4. I've beaten it up a bit. Um, it's an action camera that can take a beating. Uh, um, it's quite tough and rough. I would recommend this one over its competitors for two reasons, actually. The first reason is it shoots raw. Raw is uncompressed footage, which means that once you start editing, you have more colorful, uh, color information and more shadow information. So you can bring skin tones back better. You can bring darks and lights back better. So shooting raw, if you're gonna edit your photos, is a big advantage. The other advantage, number two of the Olympus is most action cameras, and they always do this, and it drives me insane. When they bring out the action camera, it, they bring them out with a 28 millimeter lens. Now, if you think about it, action camera, you wanna be in the action, right? It's all around you. And then all of a sudden with a 28 millimeter lens, it's this, you do this. Like all of a sudden there's nothing on the sides. So you're, out of the action in a way. Olympus has a 24 millimeter lens, which is already a bit wider, but it's still quite, mm, but they did something really clever. As an extra, you can buy this lens. It's their fisheye lens. And let me show you what happens when you put that on. So normal image with fisheye. Normal with fisheye. See the difference? So when you put that lens onto the camera, like so, all of a sudden you have a camera that, it gets two out of three requirements. You get a camera that shoots raw and that has a wide angle lens on it. Disadvantage of this camera? Well, no manual control over the image. That plus, I mean, the sensor, I'll show you a couple of examples. The sensor is noisy. It's it's a bit of a messy sensor. There's always grain there. It's not very fine, which kind of brings us to the next level. If you have a budget of between 500 and 1,000, there are compact cameras. We're still in the compact range, but these compact cameras now have a one inch sensor. Canon does compact cameras with a one inch sensor but so does Sony and I think Panasonic has them too. The advantage of this sensor is because it's bigger, it can gather more light in a way, or it's easier for it to gather light. The pixels have a little bit more room to play. So you get more colorful uh, color information, you get more dynamic range. So more information in the shadows. So you already get a camera that can handle uh, what we do a bit better. Um, it can handle editing, it can handle um, stark differences between light at the surface and dark underneath. But I also find nice in these cameras is that they give you some manual control. You can tell it, tell it which shutter speed to use, you can tell it with which aperture to use, which ISO to use. So they put that all in your hand I think the best one of this bunch for both stills and video is the Sony RX100, especially if you get like the RX100 IV or the RX105. Now those cameras are already pressing your budget quite a bit. So if you want to stay below a thousand, I would say get RX104. You can probably get a good deal on that with like an Icolite housing 
and an Enon screw-on lens so you can get the wide angle. So that's it for the compact cameras. The next level up is probably going to be, you're going to look at interchangeable lens cameras. Between like a thousand and fifteen hundred, maybe a little bit more. You're looking at cameras that can um, support different kinds of lenses. In that price bracket, you're probably looking at a four thirds, micro four thirds sensor. So that's already, again, a step bigger than the one inch sensor we had before. So that makes it easier for, again for that camera to gather light, to um, gather information from the light. I think in that category for films, I'd probably go with um, Panasonic because they do films really well. The G7 or the G8. For uh, photos, I've worked with Olympus, the um, OMD5, I think it was, the OMD5 Mark II. I'm really impressed with their photos. They're kind of the crisp files, there's lots of information in there. For both, I would recommend um, a lens that's good for micro four thirds is the 714 lens. Panasonic do one, uh, which is um, slightly cheaper than the Olympus. If you're gonna go for the Olympus, you're really stretching your budget, probably, but that's generally acknowledged to be almost like a classic in micro four thirds lenses. The 714 Olympus F 2.8, great lens, lovely to work with, um, fast. So that I, is an ideal lens for, for the micro four, four thirds system. Panasonic make a 714 as well. It's less fast, but it's still, from all that I've heard, a great lens to work with. Next up, budget-wise, we're talking between 1500 and 2000. You're getting into really interesting territory there. Um, it's the upper echelon of the micro four thirds lens, uh, cameras and the interesting echelon also for the APS-C. APS-C is another, is another step up in um, sensor size. I, okay, so <clears throat> I was at an event where I was shooting together with a friend who is on a Canon 5D full frame. I was shooting Sony A7R2 full frame and a friend of mine was shooting with um, a Panasonic GH4 which is a micro four thirds and so we had a chance to compare files at the same depth and see what came out the canon and the sony were roughly equivalent i'd say but you could really tell that uh, micro four thirds at that depth was starting to lose information it it couldn't you couldn't bring back the shadows as well you couldn't definitely couldn't bring back the colors as well I think for underwater photography, there is something to be said for the bigger sensors. So if you have a chance of choosing between micro four thirds and APS-C, I would go for the APS-C sensor. And in that uh, category, you probably have the choice between, on the film side, I would go for the Sony A6300 or the A6500. Um, probably the A6300 budget wise. It's a good camera in general, like it does good photos, it got, does good film. I think it's in that sector for film, it's the, probably it etches it out because it has a stabilized sensor, which is nice when you're filming. It shoots 4K really well. Uh, it shoots it in log profile, so you got a nice flat profile. And Sony seems to have have nailed the, the the video side of things with this this camera for photos though i've worked with this camera and i fell in love with it i almost bought it myself then the nikon d500 it is an unbelievable camera for for photos like the files it produces are the dynamic range is incredible like it was i think as good as my camera like and i shoot with a full frame but I was so impressed with what this camera could do with shadows. I was really impressed with what it could do with skin tones. What I was most impressed with though, as a sports camera, and we are kind of talking sports cameras here, like was 
the burst and how long it could maintain a burst. Like in theory, you could just start shooting from above and follow the diver all the way down. <laughs> like the burst doesn't seem to end and it has a good frequency of shooting. So I think it's like seven shots a second or something. It, for me, it hits the sweet spot where it comes to performance, durability, but also it can, it can keep up with me. You know, I shoot a lot underwater and that camera seemed to be able to just deliver. It doesn't do video very well by any definition. I mean, it shoots 4K apparently, but with a heavy crop and it's, it's not a video camera. But if you're just going for photos and you have the budget for it, the D500 will not dis disappoint you. It's an amazing camera and it's got good glass. The next step up, and we're talking two and a half thousand and beyond probably, you're looking at full frame sensors there. You'll be amazed at what a full frame sensor can do sometimes. Like you can shoot pretty much in the dark and bring, bring it back to light. I've brought back red colors from more than 20 meters deep. If you know color theory, that's, that's almost impossible. Like it's, these sensors register so much information that I'm, I'm, I'm still baffled by what they can do. I think the best sensor uh, for film right now is on the Sony A7S II. This is a machine that can pretty much film in, in the darkness. It is so sensitive and it's so made for filming that um, you only need a tiny little bit of light and, and, and it absorbs it all. It has an amazing stabilization and it it's an incredible camera. It's almost like a film camera. I think for photos, I would switch to the Nikon D850. Like it has a similar, uh, similar sensor to the A7R2 but it has much better ergonomics. It has a much bigger buffer. It has a higher frame rate. It, oh, it's, it's an incredible camera. It's nice to hold. It sounds great. But if you ask me now, are you gonna switch to either the A7S II or the D850? I say, well, no. I'm probably gonna go to the A7R III because I need both. So for me, it's not as easy as like, do I want to film or do I need to photograph? No, I, I do both. So I feel that the Sony a7R three is, uh, is the, the best compromise between the two. For photos, I'd go Nikon D850. For a video, I'd go Sony a7S II or maybe wait until the three comes out. But because I need both, Sony a7R 3 probably. So those are my suggestions. Let me know in the comments what you are shooting with. Let me know what you'd like me to review next. I'm probably gonna do a video on the GoPro 7 once I get one, see what that's like. Um, but yeah, be sure to give me suggestion on what you, suggestions on what you would like me to handle next. If you want to like, this video subscribe and I'll put on some links of other videos that I've done that you might want to check out some that I've done with GoPro one that I've done with like a 20 millimeter lens so thank you for watching see you next time